We're here with Eric Dollard at EPD Laboratories Inc. and Eric is going to explain um, about his uh, music television project and uh, what you're seeing on the screen here. So right now this is the power company, uh, how would you say, cycle as compared to a uh, reference oscillator. So the reference oscillator operates exactly on 60 cycles a second, but the power company frequency always changes a bit. So this kind of gives an idea when the image moves, it means that the power frequency is not the same as the reference frequency. Now what's interesting is when we look at this here, see it's not really a perfect circle anymore because there's so many harmonics in the power system now that all these little kinks are appearing and this is because of the proliferation of the double Y power connection is turning the power system into a, a sea of harmonics so you don't get a sine wave anymore and the power coming in to your residence or your building or equipment or what have you you're getting all these harmonics now which then in turn cause interference to other services and accumulate places where you don't want them so when we were talking about the RCA receivers, we have a similar situation in that one receiver would go to the horizontal, which in this case is the power company, and the other receiver would go to the vertical, which in this case is the reference oscillator. So if this was connected to the RCA receivers, then then the vertical channel would be one receiver and the horizontal channel would be the other receiver. Each receiver would have its own antenna pointed in its own direction. And then if you put a sine wave tone at a distant HF transmitting site, then the circle will give you an idea of what the ionospheric influence is, uh, taking that out of phase, where in this case it's harmonics and uh, and the fact that they can't keep the power frequency exactly 60 cycles instantaneously with the governors and regulators, it would be a similar situation, but it would look much more complicated because the ionosphere is a much more complicated transmission medium than the regulators and transmission lines and transformers in the power grid. So there's a third element missing here. This project really hasn't gotten gotten going yet, but uh, I did want to make sure to get at least this far so I can watch the power company, is the uh, video, introducing the video into this. There's no video at this point. Uh, it becomes difficult to put video into a regular oscilloscope because the cathode on a regular oscilloscope is usually operating at a very high voltage and you can't connect anything to it. Where here, if the television CRT, in the television CRT, the cathode operates at the neutral voltage, and the high voltage is on the accelerators to shoot the electrons at the screen with some, uh, some good force to make the screen light up. So basically, the television CRT is hooked up the right way, and the oscilloscope CRT is hooked up the wrong way for video, which makes sense because you have to have video in television, but you very seldom have video in an oscilloscope. So what the video consists of is the two channels mixed together out of phase and an associated network that goes with that to break down the harmonic components, and then that's applied to the so-called Z-axis so the way that you would do that with something very simple like this is you would have a third 60 cycles coming from the reference oscillator and that would uh, intensify half the circle and then de-intensify or dim out the other half of the circle so that way you would know what your phase is going around. It would give it depth where now it's very hard to distinguish one side of the circle from the other. There's nothing that codes it. Now when you do that with the RCA receivers, then that's when you start to get an actual image on the screen because of the complexity. 
and the video is very essential at that point to bring out a lot of details that you couldn't get otherwise. Now as far as the, in the music television sense, then the vertical is the right hand channel and the horizontal is the left hand channel of your stereo. And that goes through all the same networks other than a new type of network is involved that uses uh, nonlinear resistances which basically are small incandescent light bulbs. So as the audio power goes up, <clears throat> the light bulb brightens up, increasing its resistance and maintaining a constant EMF at the CRT so that your image doesn't want to get off the screen. So in audio, that's called a, a compressor unit. So that way, as the music gets louder, you don't have to keep turning your gain up and down. It becomes logarithmic and it keeps it on the screen. So, it's, uh, if you have a regular oscilloscope, you can start to experiment with this by taking the right-hand channel and hooking it to the vertical and the left-hand channel, hooking it to the horizontal and seeing what kind of patterns you get on the screen depending upon what kind of music you want to listen to. So, some music makes images, some music makes fantastic images, and then what people call music today makes no image that is, uh, might make you want to think what music is called today might not be music. Living music for living people and... Dead, dead music, music for, for dead people. <laughs> <laughs> so I've done all this at Landers. I had the full music television there with all the various networks and what have you. And, the, uh, and I would say that George Frederick Handel produces, his music produces the best image. But, uh, but all the music from that era, particularly box organ music, produces some really stunning images. And I actually had somebody run from the, uh, the terminal room that the equipment was contained in because she thought what was on the screen was alive and it scared her out of the room. And it actually goes back to the, um, the medieval concept of music when they played music in these cathedrals is that it formed a body in space and the music of television allows you to see that body where normally you couldn't possibly see such a thing. The music television allows you to start to get an image of what this anima looks like that relates to the music. So this is actually one project that I'm more interested in just about anything else right now but because everything is in storage here and what have you, I, I can't get to the parts. And, but all the components necessary to build this, including this very difficult to find oscilloscope, are all here. And to me, it's the most important project of all because I listen to hours of Bach and Handel. And I want to get back where I can look at it on the screen again because it opens up a, a completely new avenue as to what the music is all about. You can see it in living form. Now I have another one over here. Go in there. Yep. Here. Oh yeah. So this is the version I had. Let me get rid of these things. They're trouble. I built this type of music television when I was in high school using a sonar indicator. Uh, all I could find in this era was this Navy radar indicator, which I don't have a manual for. Most of the circuitry I don't need. Uh, this is what's called the plan position indicator. I think, you know, there's always, there's plenty of Hollywood TV shows with the thing that goes around that everybody associates with radar. <clears throat> so that's like the sweep on the television. And then as that turns around, the video brightens certain spots of it and produces the picture. So what I did is I took a spectrum analyzer, like this one here, Watch out, we're caught in the cord. Uh, you take a look at it from the front. Let's 
So that's the spectrum analyzer that I had when I was in high school, or at least one very similar to that. And then the sweep on the spectrum analyzer CRT becomes the plan position indicator sweep that is slowly turned around the screen. So now that normally is barely visible, just like it is with the radar, until a radar echo comes through, or in this case, a pip on the spectrum analyzer screen at that point in the sweep, and that produces a bright spot. So when you take uh, Bach organ music and you put it into the spectrum analyzer and then you do a PPI sweep on it, it produces some of the most astounding patterns that uh, I can't really describe. You'd have to see them. It's almost like a like, video version of cymatics. Yeah, yeah, both of these are. Mm -hmm. This is, is the normal uh, television presentation where this is the normal radar presentation. Mm -hmm. Now I do have another, I have a more simpler scope where I could do this on an XY coordinate system and uh, alleviate the complications of, of having to figure out how to connect into this thing but that scope is, uh, that one's destined to be the CRT on the, uh, on the seismograph. So it has kind of a dedicated purpose, but I can always patch in the other signals from another source into that scope and, and get the musical, how would you say, kind of representations or patterns on the screen. But that's essentially what this thing is intended to be so but it's very difficult to take apart and I cannot find a manual for it. And that is not really an essential project at this moment, but that's what this is here for. But it's most likely that the television uh, CRT, that is not a problem. Then I have a third, third CRT here. And I think I'm gonna start with this one. And unfortunately, it's the oscilloscope type, but I'll have to um, I'll have to leave the DC component out on the video, which worked okay at Landers. But this was probably what will go in the rack in the sound room to start with. A simple XY oscilloscope, no sweep or what have you. It was uh, out of the Bell System TD2 test bay. I don't know who made it for Western Electric, but somebody did. So that's a nice, simple, compact unit. And then the racks, of course, are in here. So that stuff mounts in here in the audio rack. And then I can get my visual presentation of the music. When I'm listening to it, I can also watch it. So it's a pretty powerful system, 600 watts to drive these bows. These are uh, propulsion amp meters off of a uh, turbine electric Navy ship. So they're very useful in giving me the amount of propulsion that the cones are generating to make the sound. And it's not actually 600 amps, in this case it's five. So when I get, when these read full scale, I know that the, the bows are not supposed to have any more power than that. And I can back it off a little bit, make sure I don't damage the speakers. But it's quite effective in shaking the entire building. I felt so, it. So the oscilloscope, the TV thing is the next item here. Whenever I can get the network panels built, then that will go together. So these are not necessarily the racks that are going to be the final result here, but they were thrown together to get the Bose speakers have to be kind of up high and away from the wall. So it kind of just served that purpose for temporary, otherwise some other rack or what have you down the line. But right now this is what I got, so this is what I'm going to use. So I think that pretty much, we pretty much talked about most of the things that need to be or want to be happening here. <laughs>